Welcome back in the Chupa Spotlight, the all new Anning SZ305. Manual ranging goodness from Anning, here we go. Well, 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 it's Chippo time again. Here we go. And what a better name for the Chippo uh, than an Anning. You know, we've come to love and hate Anning as of late. They've got some really decent meters and they've got some, well, real turds. Hopefully, this is going to be at least somewhere in between because, man, I hate a bad Anning. First thing you get out is those test leads. Let's take a look at these. Man, these really bite the big one. They're cheap, they're cheesy. Yeah, they pass the pull test, I mean, for now, but they are so minute, so small in comparison to the meter, it's almost ridiculous. You'd expect to find these on one of those 830 clones, not on a multimeter like this. Oh, why, Henning? Get two different manuals, one in English, one in Chinese, or sorry, one in Chinese, one in English. Um. <laughs> Nothing more than a paper pullout, really. Has the basics there, the specs. Nothing to write home about, but at least you get something. Shipped in this uh, decent little color box. A little bit worse for wear after coming over that pond, but hey, it made it in one piece. And let's not forget the most important part, of course, the meter. Um, it is so light. It's just really, really light. Got a nine volt battery in here right now. If you take out that battery, it's almost like holding a cloud. This is definitely a lightweight. That being said, manual ranging, um, plastic buttons, they're not soft touch buttons. No, they're cheap, cheesy plastic. Same with that holster. Yeah, cheap, cheesy plastic all the way around. We have tilt stand here and you know, it's okay, but nonetheless, yeah, it is the basic. Uh. One thing I do like, however, is that LCD screen, that liquid crystal display. It is very crisp, very verbose, fairly, fairly decent looking backlight. Stays on for about a minute. Has that nice huey bluey going on, but very easy on the eyes. You can see a little bit of bleeding there where the LEDs are coming across. But that being said, it's a pretty decent backlight. I wish it stayed on permanently, but it goes off after about 60 seconds. Come to think of it, a bit like my mother-in-law. Ooh. You notice as well that Anning is giving us this sort of recessed uh, top. It's just a faux display look. It doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't move. It just gives us that fake appearance that it's a little bit elevated. But Now this Anning also has that battery test feature. A little unusual. It goes from 1.5, 3, 9, and 12 volts. So quite a few different voltage settings. Basically it puts a resistance or a load on the battery. And in this case, that 1.5 is coming up as 1.4 volts. So it gives you an indicator of how long that battery is going to last. Uh, in this case, it's almost on the way out. Checking out that diode functionality now. Let's start off with that red LED. It is lit. Forward voltage drop, same with the green. And the yellow, yes, it is lit. It's hard to see. And we have that forward voltage drop over to the white. No, no can do. And the blue, no. So three out of five in terms of illumination and a forward voltage drop. For standard diodes, yeah, not a problem. Don't get that nice audible beep, but it's working. Output it's voltage in diode mode, 2.2 volts. Quick look now at continuity. Here we go. Stock default, crappy test leads. Three, two, one. Oh, wow. Surprisingly, it is fairly quick. It's latchy and not bad in terms of audibility. Hey, let's try Pro Masters. Pro Masters, here we go. Slightly quicker to latch, but that's about it. Wow, is that it? I thought it was louder. Only 55.3 decibels. Output volume in continuity. <laughs> DC precision voltage, 5.01 volts coming up. 5.00 is what we wanted. Next up, we're looking at capacitance. Now this meter has a whopping 20 millifarad, 20,000 microfarad capacitance. That's not too shabby for a cheapo. So let's see just how well it is, how fast it is. We have a 10,000 microfarad capacitor, 10 millifarad. I've got it on the 20 millifarad range. And here we go.
there we go, 9.5 millifarad. Not bad. Took a little while, but all things considered, it works. On the other hand here, we have a small 3.3 microfarad cap. Let's just see how well that does. Actually, let's bring it down. Put it to the 20 microfarad range. Coming in at 2.89 and finally a very small capacity here. I'm gonna bring it right down to the 20 nanofarad and there we are, 10 nanofarad. Perfecto. Volts, but right now it's in DC mode. So we hit select, turn it into AC mode and we are good to go. Just gonna plug it into this cool 120 volt AC plug and coming in at 122.7 volts AC. Yeah, it's not true RMS, but hey, close enough. Hooked up to a 100 milliamp precision input and coming in at 99.7 milliamps. Excellente. Currently we have the anning hooked up to a high current source. Uh, 8.2 amps is what we're sitting at. And yes, 8.22 coming up on the anning. Let's just see if we have a high current alarm when we hit that 10 amp threshold. And yes, we do. Under 10 amps, no more high current alarm. I'm curious to see what this would look like uh, from a thermal imaging perspective. Now look at that. 7.56 amps. I'm going to bring it up again. Over 10 amps. Look at those test leads. In fact, look inside the multimeter where that current shunt is just toasty right now. Oh yeah, those test leads, they feel like, like butter. Anyway, there's a good overall visual of what it looks like when you're sitting over 10 amps. Finally, we're taking a look at the NCV non-contact voltage and you can see we're in NCV mode. Yeah, absolutely nothing coming up on NCV. And this is high current mains. Oh, 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 we're finally getting something. And that was really terrible. So, wow, in terms of NCV, this thing sucks. Ugh. Here we go, teardown time. Now I was not expecting too much and Anning did not disappoint. <laughs> Yeah, not a lot going on here. Look at this. Pretty feeble in terms of input protection. Uh, we have one PTC on the voltage side. We don't even have a current shunt. We don't have a current shunt. If you take a close look here, that's our high 20 amp current input. So all we have is a current sensing resistor. It's an SMD uh, 0.01 ohm current sensing, current sensing resistor. So not even a, a shunt. Uh, not a good thing. For the battery connection over here, we have the uh, positive and negative, just solder to those terminals. I'm in contact with the PCB itself. We have some uh, off-site programmable headers over here for factory calibration. Of course, the main CPU is cobbed. It's a 48-pin quad-flat package. But, and I say but, let's pull back for a second, shall we? Look at this NCV. Look at that. This wire Actually, the metal filament goes all the way from the side of the PCB, the circumference of the top of the meter, and it terminates over here for some reason. And in reality, in real world testing, as you can see, it was completely useless. So, wow, what an NCV fail that is. And considering the size of this antenna, doesn't make any sense. And by the way, those input jacks, split variety, of course, and they are soldered in, hand soldered, actually not so bad, quite a liberal in terms of that uh, soldering application. Funny as well here we have a couple of one, two, three uh, rubber plastic pylons here just to give some pressure on that uh, display uh, making contact so you're going to get uh, good contact with the Elastomar giving us that pretty good LCD display. I gotta say all things considered considering it's a cheapo that display was pretty vibrant but yeah pretty funky cold Medina in terms of uh, setup. Something else I gotta love with these cheapos is how many screws, one, two, three, four, five, six screws for this tiny nothing PCB. It's absolutely ludicrous. Anyway, let's just lose that top screw. And doing the flipperoo, you see we have that 
rotary selector tracks. Absolutely no dielectric on here whatsoever. I'm not surprised. Um, there is the Elastomar once again, that crazy NCV antenna. And there is our tracks, not our tracks rather, but our pads for the tracks. We have one, two, three, four, five, six pads in total. It's not the ball and spring either. We have that inlay mechanism here that makes contact. So eh, it's, it's okay. It's not bad. Nothing wrong with it, but it is definitely a cheaper variety uh, selector than we're used to seeing in the cheapo zone too. Closing thoughts on the ending. S said 305. Where do they come up with these numbers anyway? Um, it's a weird one. Yeah, what can I say? It's a cheapo and I was expecting the world out of this meter, but I was definitely expecting a little bit more. Truth be told, it really does feel like a cheapo and I'm not always good with that. Just because a meter is cheap doesn't mean it has to feel like it's worth 25 cents, but hey, this just feels real cheap. That being said, it does have a pretty vibrant display, which I like. I wish that backlight would stay on permanently, but hey, what else is new? has that 200 baker home resistance build, which is really nice every now and then. Nice. Now this is a manual ranging meter. It's not for everybody. And it definitely is not a well-made meter. I mean, internally, it just really sucked. Basically no input protection. Don't even get a current shunt from Anning with this one. About 20 bucks Canadian, around 15 or so US dollars. So, hey, I guess what can you expect? The Anning SZ305 gets a solid 2.5 out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing. High current voltage test, oh yeah. 500 volts coming up. And it survived, interesting. Here we go, 1000 volts. It survived.